There it is. Yeah. Music's always jazzy. It like is. That. It is. I think Chris turned the volume down. It's not as loud as it... It felt not as loud as it normally is. Probably is my ears. Like, probably I'm more deaf now than I was last week. Yeah, probably. But we control volume on our side. Like, well, I, could, true. I, I could do it right here. It's true. Yeah, just do it. But overall, it sounded less, less volumey. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll see. But, was it volumey for you, our watchers and listeners? We shall find out. Sure. You can tell us all about that in the comments. And doing comments enters you to win prizes. And later in the show, don't ruin it. We have an update to the prize of later prizes. Mm. So we're keeping that a secret for now. Sure. We've just got awesome prizes that we're mm-hmm. giving to a commenter. And the prize of later will determine right. who gets that super awesome gift. Well, they get to choose still. Oh, that's right. That's true. Yes. But yes, we'll announce what the new prize is later. After the guest. That's right. This, this is potentially a monumental episode because I think my family is listening in or watching it. They Fantastic. said they were going to try. Fantastic. Lindsay is joining us and Amelia. We may see them later on in the show, but I think they're watching. So if you're watching, family, hello. That's right. You can, you can make a comment. Yes, let, please comment. And let, uh, mm. and let uh, Ben know you're, you're watching. Yep. That would be fantastic. Yep. It would be good. So welcome to Lancaster Connects. This is uh, the show about Main Street, the show about big versus small. Uh, we love shining the light on Lancaster County, small businesses, smaller charities, medium-sized charities, you name it. If they have impact here in Lancaster County, we're going to uh, put some put some spotlight and shine on them. And our guest uh, today is great and near and dear to Ben and yeah. the McClure family. Okay. Hi, Lindsay. Lindsay's tuning in. There it is. Ben was pointing. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Oh, it's like schmoopy. Well, uh, we're 79 episodes in. And right. uh, I, there was an opportunity to watch two weeks ago, I think. I, I don't know if she forgot or was busy, but thank you. Thank you, dear. Appreciate it. Usually she's working on Monday, so I can't, I can't fault her for not, not joining us live. There you go. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, you have to work. Yeah, you do. You do. Don't want to break the rules. Uh, it looks like she's watching on Facebook, which is one of the places you could watch mm-hmm. live. Uh, Lancaster Connects on the Lancaster Connects Facebook page, the Gardener's Mattress and More Facebook page, or your and my personal Facebook pages, um, or uh, YouTube, same thing, Lancaster Connects on YouTube, or Gardener's Mattress and More on YouTube. And I should mention, we are producing this show live from Gardener's Mattress and More, which is behind Park City Mall on Plaza Boulevard. That's right. But Very a busy, good. busy morning here, Gardner. It is busy. And, you know, good. being busy affords us the opportunity to put on a great show like this, where we can That's highlight right. local small businesses mm-hmm. and uh, nonprofits and charitable organizations. And I guess without further ado, we should bring on our guest, um, That's right. Jennifer West from Girls on the Run Lancaster. Uh, she is the program director and co-founder of Girls on the Run Lancaster. And she was so kind uh, to fill our empty uh, slot for today, our empty guest slot. We had a last minute uh, last week, postponement uh, for another day, and uh, we needed a guest quickly and and uh, reached out to Girls in the Run, and Jennifer said, yes, I'd like to be featured on Lancaster Connect Podcast. So thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. My gosh, the pressure when you said this is a monumental <laughs> show today. My hand started splitting. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. No pressure. No Whole pressure. Whole family's in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. So... <laughs> Uh, Jennifer, thanks for being on. Uh, you're representing Girls on the Run. We'll get into all of the great things that uh, you and Girls on the Run do. Uh, just a couple of questions to maybe get to know you a little bit better. Are you a, a Lancaster County native? I am. You are, okay. Born and bred. I yep. grew up and went to school in Mannheim Township. Okay. Yeah, so I just, I left Lancaster for like seven or eight years and then came back when I was ready, when I was married and ready to start a family. and. I have to say, growing up and living in Mannheim Township, I absolutely loved it. And then we ended up buying a house in Hempfield. So all of you from Lancaster, you know that moving from Mannheim Township to Hempfield is sometimes really (laughs) hard to do. (laughs) So now you you wear the red and the black? (laughs) I do. Okay, well, that's all right. Sorry to say, I love both, you know, Hempfield and 
Manhattan Township. But yeah, so I'm I'm from Lancaster. And let me tell you, when you come back and you can say you're from Lancaster County, my gosh, does that make it a lot easier to assimilate into groups and activities? Yeah, yeah, for Such sure. Close knit community that we love. Yeah, that's awesome. We'll talk more about. Um, obviously, the show is about Lancaster and the great things that happen in Lancaster. We'll talk more about uh, some of the things you like to do in Lancaster at the end of our time together. But uh, you're here talking about Girls on the Run. Let's let's learn what yes. Girls on the Run is and why the program exists. Oh, great. Well, thank you. So. Girls on the Run, we are in actually in Lancaster and Lebanon now, and we are a girl empowerment program. So we are here to really lead girls in small teams of eight to 15 girls. And we talk about character development. We talk about resilience, making good choices, which is really important because in adolescence, the girls' confidence drops twice as much as boys do. So we see them raising their hands less in school, taking less chances. And we want the girls to know that uh, being unique is is what they were born to be. You don't want to be like everybody else. You don't want to look like this person does or do the same things that that other person does. Um, We encourage them. We talk about finding your star power. So your star power is what makes you unique, what you love about yourself. For some girls, it might be art. Some it's math or drawing or sports or whatever it is um, and letting your star power shine. So we're really talking to those girls about um, who is it and how do they be the boss of their own brains and the leaders of tomorrow. And and right now, like the social and emotional, <laughs> you know, with everybody having to be in smaller groups um, due to COVID or maybe not all coming together having fun in a group and playing games and and just laughing. Oh my gosh, it seems like such a gift right now. And it's it's what we are with Girls on the Run. That's yeah. fantastic. I, I'd yeah. like to share, um, my daughter went through the program as we talked pre-show. Um, my daughter, Amelia, and I think I, uh, there's a couple of pictures we'll show here. Um, but she went through the Girls on the Run program. Seems like forever. Oh my gosh, there they are. There's Amelia and Lindsay. <laughs> It's crazy to look at this picture because, like, Millie's was eight years old, maybe nine, uh, in that picture. Wow. In, in third grade, she went through the Girls on the Run program, had a great time. But of course, now she's in eighth grade and she's five foot nine. And she's like, as, as the, the difference between Lindsay and Amelia in this picture is the opposite difference now. She's like, she's, I feel like she's almost as tall as me. So, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's just funny to see a picture like this, but she had a fantastic uh, time in the Girls on the Run program when she did it in third grade. There, there they are during the walk, which Yay. you know you'll share more about uh, later. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, you can tell by the uh, hat uh, or earmuffs and gloves. It was a, a cold November day, um, sunny, but it was. I remember it being pretty cold. Yes, our fall five Ks are are usually pretty chilly, and yeah. I. I have to give a sh- shout out to Neff Elementary where Amelia participated because yep. they still have they still have girls on the run teams. They're going strong. So great. that's really, that's great to see. I remember picking her up and there were always girls flooding out of the building. And I, I was really surprised that there were that many girls enrolled in the program. Oh, oh my gosh. Yes. So <laughs> how it works is that um, most of our teams are actually at the elementary schools just because that's where the girls are during the day. And it's easy for them to walk from school down to the team. And it doesn't have to be at a school. We have them at community buildings, at churches, at the YMCA, the Boys and Girls Club, which is really nice. Um, But each team is a small team. It's 8 to 15 or maybe sometimes 20 girls with um, fully trained coaches. So three to four coaches. And the small dynamics really makes it um, nice for the girls to bond. They are able to share they grow very close with each other and with the coaches. And that is part of what makes it such a unique ex- experience. And so we have um, this season, we're hoping to have 80 teams throughout Lancaster and Lebanon. Wow. So that's a lot of teams. We have <clears throat> 400, 450 volunteer coaches, mm. which is remarkable. I have to give a shout out to our coaches as well. And um, so it's just overall, possibly 1,100 girls and so you can just imagine just all of these girls. And then when we come together for the 5K and they all have running buddies like your wife was, Ben, um, it's just, it's really a remarkable day. And uh, what makes 
Girls on the Run unique other than like a sports program, um, other than the social and emotional learning. We're not competitive, which is very nice. So you don't have to be a runner to join or to coach. Um, I know you were saying that Amelia, they walked the 5K, which is great. We love, we have walkers, joggers, runners. We have um, all different speeds and we celebrate first place and last place equally. Awesome. It's really just the goal of, um, it, it's just accomplishing and finishing the 5K. And what they do the whole way through in our 10 weeks is that they set smaller goals each mm-hmm. practice and attaining those goals. And then they realize that, you know, completing a 5K is possible because I don't know about you, but when I was in third grade, I certainly did not think I could ever, you know, complete a 5K. No. So it's it's really amazing that these girls do it. You, um, two things I want to focus on. Um, mm-hmm. First, you mentioned how this is about good decisions for these young ladies. And it reminded mm-hmm. me of a Warren Buffett quote that the number one job of a CEO is to make good decisions. So I love that you and not that I'm trying to equate business to girls on the run, but it's just a connective quote in that that's really kind of what life is about is, is setting yourself up and acquiring the knowledge the social skills, emotional mm-hmm. learning skills, having the confidence to know what is and what isn't a good decision. Yeah. So I really like, Absolutely. like that a lot. That's very yeah. cool. Thank so, you. Second, what I find intriguing is your coaches to runners uh, number. Like, it seems to mm-hmm. me you have a lot of... Now, now, my perspective was there was a year in youth football when I coached where we had like 35 kids 10-year-old, nine, 10-year-old boys, which is a rambunctious age. And there were three of us. That was a, ru- that was a rough season. It's <laughs> a recipe for disaster. Uh, that would be rough. Yeah. So tell us about, tell us, because I think, I think for parents, maybe that they want their child to get that leadership attention. They mm-hmm. want a different voice, a different point of influence. Mm-hmm. I think that's a wonderful attribute for girls on the run to have. It, did I understand that right? How many coaches mm-hmm. per? Absolutely. Group like yeah. Talk a little bit more about that. Yeah. So um, actually, three coaches is our minimum per team. Sometimes there's four. Sometimes there's five. And and you're right. That is very important because we have these discussions about the intentional decision making. Um, sometimes it's about friends. Sometimes it's about social media, uh, which is really nice to talk about. No matter what it is, the girls need attention. And so while we're um, In the workout, doing laps, different coaches can talk with the girls. They walk with the girls or jog with the girls. (laughs) And it's really nice um, because sometimes somebody will need to have a one-on-one conversation about something difficult that's happening. And then that leaves other coaches to cheer the girls on and really walk with them and get to know them at a deeper level, which is very important for girls on the run. And we have coaches of all abilities and all ages. We have. High school girls who are junior coaches, mm. and I, I like to say that the elementary girls just look up to them with like big blinky eyes and just are like, oh my gosh, you know, if you see a high school girl taking time out of her day to come spend, you know, an hour and a half twice a week with elementary school girls, it's very impactful. And there are such positive role models, and they can say, like, oh my gosh, I was in your shoes not too long ago, and you can get through it. And this is why it's important to be true to yourself and not conform like everybody else. So those high school girls are very important to the program. We also have um, women who are in college all the way up to, I think we have a coach who's 75 and she's been with us for a very long time. Yeah, Yeah, it's great. We have men who are coaches and it's important for us that the girls see men in the positive leadership roles um, because you don't get to see that all the time. So mm-hmm. especially at that age. And yeah. um, and it's really nice, as you were saying, to have all of this special attention. And our coaches, some of them, almost all of them, just go above and beyond. You know, they will, if a girl is hurt and can't come to a lesson, yeah. they will take the lesson to her. And after practice, stop by her house with some fun things yeah. and a wrap-up of the lesson and to do some energy cheers, which is where we get to do fun oh. dances and celebrate the girls. Um, so it's it's a, it's a very nice community. And our coaches say that they get as much out of it as the girls do because, 
you know, at, at our age, um, who doesn't need to talk about confidence or making connections or, you know, good decisions. So it's it's really nice as we call it a continuum of confidence, you know, from third grade all the way up until you're done coaching. <laughs> so look, yeah, and it's it's a good it's a ripple effect throughout the community. I look to Ben. I like the idea of energy chairs. Maybe maybe Amelia can come in and um, yeah. lead us can, on a, yeah. on a, before like a holiday weekend kickoff of sales she for like to, energy chairs yeah. to to ramp yeah. us off. She would she would teach us yes. um, like musicals. She would, but I don't know that she would do the the energy cheer. She oh. would, she would want to teach us musicals, and that's well, how, she could give you a superstar. She would get us moving. That's pretty much it. Yeah, well, yeah. that's what. There we go. There we go. <laughs> there it is. Just for I you, like Ben. It. I, I like. <laughs> it. I love that the program exists because you're creating opportunities for a child uh, to open up to uh, you know a coach or you know the, the high school girls where they might not open up to a parent or a teacher mm-hmm. or feel comfortable. Uh, expressing certain things. So it's it's really awesome that that opportunity exists um, for these young ladies. Um, you're the co-founder of Girls in the Run in Lancaster. What led you to to do that? Like, what what was it that, would, did you feel like something was missing? Um, or wh- how did you find out about Girls on the Run? Like, what, what made you bring it to Lancaster? Right. So um, my good friend, Carrie Johnson, she... Um, she is the one who learned about Girls on the Run first. So her daughter came home and um, wasn't feeling great about herself. It was being bullied a little bit. And so Carrie Googled girls, self-esteem and running and Girls on the Run popped up. Wow. And um, she thought, oh my gosh, this is something that I know I need in my family. Uh, I know Lancaster needs it and we have nothing like it. So she researched it a little bit more and thought, wow, this is a big undertaking and I can't do it alone. So who do I know who would love to help me start it? So she knocked on my front door um, and she told me all about it. And I thought, wow, you know, this is fabulous. And neither one of us at the time, obviously, knew how big this would become. I mean, that's impossible to dream. So we started out in 2009. We went through all of the training and at the time, she and I both had third and fifth graders. So it was, it was absolutely perfect. You know, now they're 21 and 23. So oh they're a little bit bigger. <laughs> I know. Um, sure. But yeah, so at the time, it was great. They were on the first teams. We got trained and we had two teams and we started with 25 girls wow. and um, six coaches. And now we've had thousands of coaches and just adding up all of the seasons, we've reached just about 19,000 girls in Lancaster and Lebanon. So oh, it's, I mean, it's incredible. absolutely amazing. You know, it makes my hands sweat when I think about it, but I love it. So we um, we uh, brought on Le- Lebanon County in 2017 because we there was no girls on the run there. And we kept hearing from people like, how how do we get this in our area? So we expanded into Lebanon and absolutely love being there. They're a great community as well. So it's it's really nice. And girls make different friends. So um, I, I had no idea what I was getting into. And um, I could not be more pleased with, with having done this. And it's really, um, as you know, Lancaster is a special, special place. And um, they... They just have such deep hearts and a love for community and people and bringing everyone together. And they have been so generous. And it is something that we could not do without the generosity of so many businesses and families and donors and families who even will share their girls with us. Um, And the same in Lebanon. You know, it's nice that everybody um, gives us their trust and and, uh, it's just, it's been fabulous. Yeah, that's great. Um, so, uh, your Lancaster and Lebanon, and, and we just had the map on the screen there. How does uh, a, a girl find out about the Girls on the Run program? Do you go to schools? Uh, rep, you have representatives go to schools and give uh, presentations, or is there information mm-hmm. handed from the school to the girl? How does that work? Just, just, that's such well, so- that's such an old school way. I don't know. <laughs> they probably they probably snap gram it. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> You're combining a few things. That's my, that's my dad joke. I say that one of my sons all the time. I love it. <laughs> Snap, Graham. Um, you can hear the girls' eyes rolling in the back of their heads mm-hmm. as you say that, right? 
Um, yeah, so it's different everywhere. Um, okay. I wish we could just get information straight into the girls. Um, it's this epigram. Straight into the girls' hands. Um, sometimes it, it's different in every district. Sometimes we are allowed to send flyers home directly to the girls when there is a team at that school. Some schools will allow us to have flyers in the office and the girls really have to listen over the announcements mm -hmm. that, hey, there are flyers available. What we are, our power is really social media and word of mouth. So this is perfect timing that you asked me yep. to be on because our spring season is going to start March 13th. So registration opens next month, February 15th. And so really what people should do is go to our website and click on our locations tab and find um, your school to see if there's a team there. It has the practice days because coaches get to pick the practice days. So let's say in the fall, if you practiced on Tuesday, Thursday, it might be Monday, Wednesday in the spring. Or if you don't see a team there that you're looking for, it's because we don't have coaches. And so we are still actively recruiting coaches and signing teams up for the spring. Um, and if you know of a team and you want to share the information, we encourage you to share it on your social media channels, follow us, reshare, retweet, regram, everything you do. Um, it's just important. Be it's so heartbreaking when we hear that girls wanted to join, but they didn't know that there was a team and how mm. are we supposed to know about it? Um, and if we can't get the information home from the schools, it's really difficult. I know, you know, yeah, I know schools, uh, at least our district, is looking to cut out paper and, and paper. Mm -hmm. um, so I know you're up against that. Just as a little, uh, if you could get on the email, like it's not email distribution list, but it's their, forget what our district calls it, but like it's an overall communication platform. Parents can opt in for this list, that list, the next one. Mm -hmm. I think getting girls on the run there could be. They are hopefully, that is our wish. Um, again, it, it depends on how active the school is and yeah. if, they, uh, if they put it out there for us. And we know we get a lot of emails during the day, right? So sometimes yeah. even if it goes out, it's yeah. hard to see. So we really yeah. encourage, if yeah. you're interested in Girls on the Run, just please ask at the office or hop on our website and really communication, letting us know if there's a team missing or or whatever it is, um, we really want to hope. And and I also want to mention that um, there is a registration fee for Girls on the Run, and we absolutely do not want that to be a barrier for anybody to join. We will never turn away any girl um, for financial reasons. So we have a sliding scale, and it's all in the honor system. So nobody has to fill out a form. We don't want to know how much you make. Um, it's all just trust. So you can pay anywhere from $10 on up to $225. Um, it's just very simple. You say, yes, I need financial assistance. There's a part that says, how much can you pay? And you type in what you can pay. Mm -hmm. And you'll yep. participate just along with everybody else. And if somebody needs help with that $10, we can also help them with that if they reach out to us. So we really want this to be accessible to everybody um, all girls of all abilities are welcome to join. And the third through fifth curriculum is called, have it right here. This is called Girls on the Run. And we talk about really um, our emotions, conflict resolutions, um, talking about the feelings, you know, they're not good or bad. They're just comfortable or uncomfortable. So that's Girls on the Run. And then Heart and Soul is for our middle school girls at sixth through eighth grade. And this is a little bit of an older curriculum. We talk about the girl will here um, and mm -hmm. all the different um, spokes of that. And this really gets into some of the things that our middle school girls are facing. We talk about reaching goals, overcoming obstacles. We talk about asking for help and giving help. And they journal a lot. So if um, when they're done with heart and soul, if they think, oh my gosh, here's a space where I need help and I don't know who to go to, hopefully they'll go back to their journal and say, Oh, I remember we wrote yeah. down a list of these people and I can go to this person for help. And it's um it's nice. So they have the the older things that in their lives that are coming up in middle school and high school, because that's a whole different animal. No, oh, big time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You yes. you also have a camp, right? Yes. 
What's what's that about? So we're very excited about Camp Girls on the Run. This is going to be, um, wow, we're really excited because now we're going to have a week of camp in Lancaster and we're going to have a week of camp in Lebanon. And so what that is, is that's um, one full week where we're taking up to 45 girls each in Lancaster and Lebanon. Hopefully if we get enough coaches signed up. Um, that in the morning they have a special girls on the run curriculum that they go through and then they'll have lunch and our fabulous host is Thaddeus Stevens. So they get to really um, experience a college campus and have lunch in their cafeteria, which is uh, very neat for these girls. And then in the afternoon, we take them um, on field trips and we go to different places where they can experience possible careers that they thought maybe um, girls or women, they haven't really dreamt of a career like that. So for instance, last summer, we went to Longs Park and we partnered with the police. So they saw the mounted police were there. Um, the canine dogs came in. So that was one of the days Another day was exploring art. Another day was all about fishing. And I think it was the um, the Game and Wildlife Commission. And they had they learned how to fish in one of the, the local streams. So it's it's really neat for the girls to get out and um and see what is available to them. And it's just a whole different way to connect with girls all throughout the county um, and just have those different experiences that they probably sometimes have never have never done. I know I've never fished, so it's very it's cool. exciting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very nice. Yeah, it's great. Mm-hmm. And um, you think you mentioned it earlier. Um, what's a junior coach? A junior coach. So that is any really? girl in high school can become okay. a coach. So oh, okay. ninth through 12th grade, they can be coaches for girls on the run. And if they'd like to be a coach for heart and soul, we ask that that's 11th and 12th grade, just so okay. they're a little bit older, there's a little um, bit more space between uh, the participants and the coaches. Makes sense. And they can hop onto our our website and um, then there's a whole button for junior coach about the responsibilities. And it's really nice for junior coaches because a lot of the the kids need volunteer hours now. And I was just going to... Right way. I was going to ask if junior coach is an opportunity for volunteer hours. It absolutely is. So it's fun. You're outside. It's physical activity. So it's a great way to check those off. And it's also um, a lot of our junior coaches are using this in college um, applications and then they're writing their essays about it. And we also are now having junior coaches who are in college and beyond. And so they're talking about it now. So it's, it's really that continuum a lot of our associate board members were either participants or um, junior coaches, and now yeah. they're looking to give back. So it's yeah, I was just it's fabulous. I was thinking, I mean, that's something you could start in high school to fulfill volunteer hours. If you love it, you stick with it. You could even <laughs> continue on volunteering throughout college years, even if that takes <laughs> you afar, because Girls on the Run is a national organization, right? Absolutely. And then you can yeah. come back to it later. Whereas other volunteer opportunities, while all great. You know, it just may not be the kind of thing that doesn't work, you know, post-college, right. post-high school. Maybe they just need high school volunteers or college age Absolutely. volunteers. Absolutely. It's kind of thing you like grow into and stick with. Very, very right. neat. Yep. Yeah, That's- thank you. And it's neat because every time you come back, it's a little bit different because the girls in the program are different. Um, the coaches are different. And, you know, you might make this connection with one girl that you didn't in the previous season and you're changing her life really without ever realizing it until maybe later. So for instance, a few weeks ago, I got an email from a girl who now works at Willow Valley and she said, I was um, a participant when I was in sixth grade, she said, and now I'm realizing I would like to reach back out to my coaches and thank them and get back in touch with them because I don't think they realize the impact that they had on my life. And I thought, oh my gosh, like she is now thinking about this as an adult. And so I emailed her coaches and her coaches were so excited. And so now they've made a connection as adults. And it's, it's amazing to think that Wow, like you know, this just it doesn't end just because the girls aren't on the team or just because you're not coaching anymore. These lessons are sticking with them through life. And that is just that's one great example of it. Do you have any um 
success stories kind of in that vein like that you can share where maybe a, a girl or a child was going through something and uh, she had a positive experience with girls on the run and you know things change for the better. Uh, do you have any uh, um, success stories like that that you can share? Well, if you have about five more hours, I'm sure I can share <laughs> so many with you. Okay. We've um, only got a, a handful <laughs> of more minutes. What? <laughs> okay. Um, part of just what I love about this this program and being program director is that we have such close contact with with the coaches and the families, and um, there is no shortage of success stories. Believe me, we have coaches who. Um, Unfortunately, there was there was one girl a season where she lost a parent mm-hmm. and then she lost the other parent. And so mm-hmm. our coaches played a huge part yeah. in her life um, and finding her somewhere to go. And she's actually um, getting ready to graduate from Milton Hershey right now. And so oh. they and it was all because of those coaches that she was just not left bouncing from house to house to house. But then she had a stable place to go, and now she is graduating and going to be successful. So that's that's fabulous. Um, we we just we know that um, unfortunately, most recent in our minds is um, the Levitt girls passing away in the the fire on Lemon Street um, oh my, yeah. was tragic, and um, this is a reminder of how much girls on the run played a part in their life and in their community. Um, knowing that those girls participated um, since uh, um, Anna started participating back when she was, you know, in third grade and then she was in high school and applied to be a junior coach and her sister was in Girls on the Run. And so um, Carrie and I were honored enough to go to the funeral and in there, you just saw Girls on the Run coaches from this school and from that school and maybe they knew them from another avenue or from the synagogue and um, just everybody mentioning girls on the run when they talked about (laughs) the girls and how much joy it gave them and how much it brought the family together and just the girls were turning into amazing, beautiful, strong, resilient women because of girls on the run. And so that is just, just reminds us of, um, you know, sometimes you can just think, oh, they're just a participant in mm-hmm. the program, but it is, it's so much more. And it's so much more than just training to be in a 5K or, I mean, it becomes your life and what you talk about and what you do. And, you know, we'll see girls running around in those capes and dads are running around in the capes. Um, and you can just tell it's, it's, making, it's making an impact in the success stories or just even too numerous to count. Yeah. Um, well, so it's we we get them every day via email, and it's wonderful. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> it's a lot more than just running, isn't it? It is. Way it is. more. It's almost a way of life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um and the the ripple effect is just amazing. And in the end, the girls will do the community impact project, where they pick, you know. Um, something that they want to give back to, whether saying it's the school or animals or the teachers or maybe um, a friend who's going through a hard time. And it's nice for the girls to see what they can do to have the ripple effect in the community because it's just not ourselves. It's just not about one or two or three other people in your friend group. It's about being part of of a greater organization and really giving back to this organization and not giving back to the organization, giving back to the community um, because we all live here and we want to make it the best place that we can. So you, uh, good segue, uh, community. Um, how mm-hmm. can the community support Girls on the Run? Oh, in so many great ways. So um, you can volunteer to coach. Um, like we said, you don't have to be a runner. You just have to have a love of empowering girls and having a great time. Uh, we train all of our coaches. They get a curriculum to follow. Um, so there's no questions. It's really easy. And you can coach one day a week or two days a week. Mm. If coaching is not your thing, our 5K is massive. And we need a lot of volunteers for our 5K. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be in May 20th at <laughs> FNM this season. And so you can hop on our website and you can volunteer to um, 
be a course marshal or help with setup or water stop, whatever it is for our 5K. Um, we always are looking for fabulous um, partners. So whether it's a family or a business, um, in kind or monetarily, we could not put this program together without the support of Lancaster because um, it does have a price tag for us to run the program. And um, 50% of our more, 50% or more of our girls are utilizing our financial assistance, which mm -hmm. we love and we are so proud of. And we need the help to make sure that happens. Um, mm -hmm. Because we also will give um, new running sneakers or clothes to girls to participate if they don't have that available because we want them <laughs> to feel secure and safe and happy with what they do. Um, and I know you were going to ask about soulmates. So that's another way that people yeah. can get involved. Real quick, Jennifer, before before we yeah. get into the soulmates, I, I, mm -hmm. I want to just dig into, because this is something I ran up with in uh, working in youth football. You said 50% of your girls and families use scholarships. And that's great. I think the fact that your organization is is well operated to be able to offer that's fantastic. I ran up against it with some families that felt I didn't want to take a scholarship because I feel I'll be the only one. Right. And our board would tell them, no, please take it. And and families would report back, well. But I don't want to, I don't want my child, I don't want to be approached differently. And and the only thing I could figure is, I'm sorry you had that experience elsewhere, but it's not going to be the experience with us. And I'm sure it's not going to be the experience with girls on the run. And everybody yeah. watching and listening should know if you need the assistant, you're not going to be the only one, as you've just heard. 50% yes. or so are using this avenue to support your Absolutely. daughter. So please do yes. so, right? Please do so. I'm so glad you, thank you for bringing that up. Um, it is confidential. So nobody um, outside of my staff, staff, myself and our executive director will know about any of the financial assistance. So um, it is all done online when you're registering um, your daughter or if you're doing it with one of our paper forms, you will just simply check financial assistance and type in the amount you can pay and we automatically cover the rest. So the girls can feel confident in going to practice and the coaches have no idea who has paid full price and who has paid $10 or anything in between. So uh, it breaks our hearts every season when we hear somebody say, I couldn't participate because it cost too much money. And that is absolutely not the case. We want every girl to participate. Um, it doesn't matter why they're joining the program, whether it's for social reasons or um, trying to train for a sport in between seasons or they just moved in, whatever it was, everybody needs it and they will get out of it what they need. And it, it would be a shame not to have that experience um, because they didn't want to put in that they need financial assistance. We are truly, this is why we raise so much money and it's why we you know get on these podcasts and go to events and talk about this we want to raise as much money as possible so we can absolutely ensure that we can give money to anybody who wants to participate without feeling um, any type of lesser than feelings with any other girl. Because nobody, nobody will know that information. That's fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, go, go ahead and talk about soulmates. And then we'd also like to know what you might have planned for the future for Girls of the Run Life. Oh. All right. So Soulmates is another great way for people to get involved um, and raise money for Girls on the Run. So Soulmates is for anyone. You can actually be in any state and be a soulmate for Girls on the Run of Lancaster. You can live in Europe and be a soulmate for Girls on the Run of Lancaster. So you sign up to be a soulmate, as you can see here. Um, and it's free to sign up and then you join the event of your choice or you can make up your own event. So you can say, I am going to do yoga every month, every day in June. Please help support me and motivate me and I'm raising money along the way. You can say, I'm doing a marathon or I'm walking a 5K. Um, we have an amazing soulmate right now who is um, training to climb... I believe it's Mount Denali, which is oh. 20,000 feet. 
And so she is leaving her Soulmates fundraising page up all year. And she is trying to raise $20,000 for 20,000 feet that she's climbing, which is, which is absolutely amazing. Um, that's a little ambitious yep. <laughs> like for most people. Um, so we just ask that you raise a minimum of $300. And it's so easy. You get to make your own um, web page that you can send out through social media or email to friends and family. And it's really a great way that if you want to give back to Girls on the Run and the girls in our community, and you don't have time to coach or come to our 5K, yeah. and if you're, you're doing an event, you might as well sign up to do it because it's so easy. $300 is just so easy to raise, you know, when you send it out to a lot of people. So this is a, another great way to get involved with us. And you get a lot of great swag along the way. Yeah. And it's, it's a great way yeah. for many people to get involved because not only is the person promoting Girls on the Run to raise mm -hmm. more funds, you're getting exposure to all the, their friends and family and people that are helping donate. That's super, Very super, super, super cool. Very smart. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And if I can plug um, Garden Spot, they ha they're having their um, half, I believe it's a, a 10K, 5K, a 10K, and a half marathon. And so we're having soulmates. We're putting teams together. So if people want to sign up as a soulmate for that, um, come. And it's it's really great community because you, you're going together. Like you said, you're seeing people who are out there um, in the girls on the run, you know, t-shirts and hats and it's just it's a fun way to participate in an event where you don't feel like you're out there doing it alone yep yeah, yeah. very cool so do you have anything big planned for 2023 and beyond or what's next for girls on the run lancaster well so in addition to our spring season summer camp and fall season <laughs> we have we have um some thought leadership events that are that are going to come up we like to we like to do things for the community where we have some thought-provoking, um, maybe some panels or discussions, things like that. So keep on the lookout. And um, we're really trying um, to... We have something called capacity building. So we're hoping to get a grant to do that. We're really looking to um, uh, have people go out into the community for us, maybe hire somebody who can recruit coaches who more um, represent our girls and look like our girls because we want to make sure that we are really bringing everybody, um, all genders, ethnicities, socioeconomic statuses. We want everybody to be a part of Girls on the Run. And so we're really looking to in the future, hoping to going to those spots where maybe Girls on the Run isn't that well known. and um, focusing on trying to bring um, different parts of the community in to be part of us because um, we just we just really want to share our mission and vision with everybody and we need help to do that. And so if somebody is going to go into different churches or areas um, and talk to those people and say, hey, the girls on the team really need to see coaches who look like them. Um, and we so we want to really try and make a concerted effort to make that happen. So that's that's on the horizon for us. We're really excited about that. That's fantastic and so important. Yeah. Thanks so much. It really for is. Yeah, it 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 really is. If they can that look and see like, oh yeah, I can do that, you know, all right. Strong, confident leaders, men, women, high school girls. Um, yeah. Mm. Just come to us. That's awesome. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I mean, thanks for bringing this to Lancaster. Um oh. you know. Thanks yeah. for uh, providing this great program, and uh, you know, thanks for being on the show. This is this has been fantastic talking about girls on the run, and and you know, nine, almost twenty thousand girls or nineteen thousand girls impacted. Yeah, it's County. crazy. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, it's it's an honor and a privilege for us um, to work with girls on the run every day. Our our staff and our team, and um, we love it, and we just feel so honored that the you know Lancaster and Lebanon are sharing the love with us. And um, yeah, thank you for having me on and yeah. to, to talk about yeah, it. Welcome. It's really great. Well, we're yeah. not we're not quite done with you. You have to go through our connection cocktail now. <laughs> okay. Let, let's learn more about Jennifer West. That's right. It's can, the, uh, <laughs> it's the trial by which all guests go through. That's right. That's oh, great. okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. So I'll kick it off. Uh, what's your favorite thing to do here in Lancaster? So I would say uh, my mine and my husband's favorite thing every week is to go down to market on Saturday. Mm -hmm. We love walking around and um, 
Oh my gosh. So I just, I love that they have tables outside now and the eateries and you can sit down and whether it's with a heater in the dead of winter or in the summertime, like that is just our thing. And it's, it's one of my favorite things to do each week. Yeah. I mean, that area is so cool because you could spend a whole morning there and like not, not even go there with a plan, but like there's so much thing, so many things to do there. And there's always people to, you know, hanging around and, and to talk to. Mm-hmm. Um, super Absolutely. cool. That, that, um, you know, it's kind of right, right here in our backyard. Okay, the yeah. second question, this this can be self-serving if you'd like it to be, but is there okay. an annual event that you attend or or put on or like to go to? Mm-hmm. What is what is your favorite? Um well, our 5Ks are the most favorite thing yep. that, that I love to do every fall and spring. But an annual event, um every Christmas uh we go to the Fulton Theater and see okay. the Christmas show, oh, which cool. I love and I I forget how much I love it every time it comes around. Mm. And then um, the farm show. So I never miss the farm show, only when it was shut down during That's COVID. Not, and yeah, just we started happened. going just when we were up, kids. Just up. I know. Um, uh, my dad used to take us out of school every Wednesday for family day, the farm show. And, and then when we moved back here, um, I've gone every year since. And so it is absolutely one of my most favorite things. That's Not funny. Real local, like here, but yeah, no, close it's enough. it's close enough. I, I I used to take the kids when the kids were were little. We haven't been there in a handful of years. I, and the funny thing was, over the weekend, I had a post, you know, a memory pop up on Facebook, and I had, mm-hmm. uh, and this was from like five or six years ago, and it was like something about paying fifteen dollars to watch a cow poop. That's that's basically what the <laughs> basically what the farm show is. You know, a bunch of <laughs> bunch of focused on the so wrong parts more. of the farm <laughs> show. I, I don't know. I think you but did. That, that's uh, that's that's the experience of the farm show. No, it, it's, it's great. You, you missed got, the milkshake. You got you got the milkshakes. The yeah, the butter skull. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, right, the butter skull. The, the carousel. And we vote for the yeah. our favorite Christmas tree every year. Okay, it's good. right, right, right. Yeah. All right. Well, last one. Being a Lancaster native, okay. born here, mm-hmm. came back. So for friends and family that aren't from Lancaster, what is it, what, what is the thing that you share with them? So the thing I share is that um, Lancaster County is just such a special, special place. And um, talk about six degrees of separation, right? Like you, everybody knows somebody in a different mm-hmm. light. So we make sure to take everybody to market um, because that is truly unique. And then we spend a lot of time just driving around the county, believe it or not, you know, looking at all the farms and the buggies and um, just truly how how remarkable this is and that it's um, it's so big, yet it's it's really tiny. And it's a place where if if you're from Lancaster, you know, you might want to get away for a few years and do some other things and see some other parts of the country. But then it's really nice to come back mm-hmm. um, because it's it's a happening place and there's a, a lot going on. And downtown has done such a great job of zhuzhing itself up. And <laughs> so we have a lot of different things for for everybody. And, we use that word um, here too. We do. Zhuzh? Yes. It's one of my favorite words. I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I just like to share our culture with them. And it's Very good. Awesome. Well, thanks yeah. so much for for sharing a little bit about what you like about Lancaster. And uh, obviously, thanks for sharing about Girls in the Run. Um, and thank you for bringing it to Lancaster. It's such a cool program. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have had my daughter go through the program. And I, I can't wait to see what you do with the future uh, young generation. So that's... Oh, thank you so much. My pleasure being on here. Um, yeah, and we're glad Amelia got to go through it as well. And yeah. yeah, we just encourage everybody to check it out, see if you have a team near you and get involved with us. That's so cool. And and uh, Girls yeah. on the Run or G-O-T-R Lancaster dot org, is it? Org. Org. Mm-hmm. Yeah. G-O-T-R yes. Lancaster dot org. There it is yeah. on the screen. So anybody who wants Absolutely. to help out, volunteer, donate, or become involved uh, can go to that website. That's the place you go. Yep. That's it. G-O-T-O. Yeah. Thanks so much, guys. For dot org. Yeah. Thanks, thanks Jennifer. Jennifer. Have a nice afternoon. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yep. yep. All right. Yeah. So a little new format. Been kind of chomping at the bit. Less banter up front. That's right. Banter in the back. Yeah. That, that, banter are in the are back. we like doing mullet, mullet, mullet? Uh, uh, that's funny. Podcasting. Yeah. yeah. Banter yeah. in the back. Party quarters. Business in the front. Party yes. in the back. Yes. Yep. Guest first. 
business in the front, banter in the back. I don't know. I mean, it's uh, wild card weekend was wild for football. Like it was. That. I didn't. You all know I'm a football fan. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, but your your birds did not play because they yeah. were what were number one seed. Number one seed. We're Ooh. resting up to uh, stomp the G Man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come uh, Saturday night, eight fifteen. I mean, they pulled off an upset, right? I mean, how do you? How do you feel about that as an opponent? Like, would you have preferred the Vikings or the Giants? Is that listen? Matter? I want to beat the best teams, okay. so the best teams win, and everybody else goes home. Okay, and I mean the Vikings for me are right behind my distaste for the Cowboys. So really, oh yeah, hundred percent. Okay, their their behavior as an organization and fan base in twenty eighteen oh. around the Super Bowl was was inappropriate. Eight. That's right, in my opinion, and. So that that earned them that status. That was a oh, man. That was a close game, right? Nick Foles pulled it out at the end, or no? Was that not a close game? No, we destroyed them. Oh, okay, thirty-eight to seven. Okay, or no? Yeah, thirty-eight. Yeah. To okay. Yeah. yeah. Super Bowl was the the close one. Yeah. Back. Yeah. Wow. But you know, it's, they don't judge Super Bowl wins by how close they were. It's the winner or loss. And it's just the way it is. And tonight's an important game. Do you have a Do you have a prediction for tonight's game? I think Brady is going to go and uh, still be the Cowboys' daddy. Okay. You he's, heard it here he's first. He's been 7 and 0 against them um, in the playoffs in or his career. In his career. And um, yeah, because he was AFC for a number oh, of years. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And, and the so Cowboys have haven't made the playoffs seven times in the last two decades. Come <laughs> no. on. What am I talking about? Ben just nuked them from <laughs> outer space on that one. I like it. I see the, I see the memes and the, I, I, I gleaned. I like yeah, I like it. So, anyway, um, yeah, my weekend was football. What was your weekend? Oh man, um, yeah. What did we do? Um, oh, uh, basketball. Julian had basketball Saturday afternoon. Um, did a lot of stuff around the house. Just kind of cleaned up. You know, like you have a week go by and busy work schedule and busy kids schedule and like stuff just starts to pile up around the house. Um, oh look, Amelia's. <laughs> They're still watching. Amelia and Lindsay are still watching. Why are we talking about football? This is what we do um, on this show. This is what we do. Um, Part of what we do. You know, uh, next volleyball tournament uh, she has in February. We'll we'll talk about Amelia's volleyball tournament. We can do that. We will do that. Yeah. Uh, no, we kind of had Amelia. Kinda... Give give your dad things to talk about. We'll talk about it. <laughs> right. It's fun. I can like make them do stuff. The kids. The kids played made uh, Mario Kart on uh, the Switch and Minecraft. So they did that a little bit. Um, just got, got some stuff done around the house, had a nice relaxing weekend. It was, it was kind of low key, which was nice. Lindsay and I actually had a date night last night. We went to, um, oh, nice. Blackworth. I think it's called the Blackworth in, in Lidditz. Really nice. I uh, had a nice steak. Uh, Lindsay had, uh, salmon. I probably said that incorrectly, according to Lindsay. Um, she'll correct me when I get home. Uh, but no, great, uh, newer restaurant in the, uh, Wilbur building. How does Lindsay say it right, and how do you say it wrong? I don't know. I, every time I say the word salmon, I say it wrong. So I don't. I don't know if that was correct mm-hmm. or incorrect. I, I I say it. There it is, Blackworth. It looks like a nice um, restaurant. My view of was that fire. Uh, you know, uh, it was funny because there was the oh, real was fire. A good glass of bourbon looking right there. There was the real fire that I could see, and then over here on this wall, there was a TV showing a fake fire. It was just kind of a funny like dichotomy of real fire, fake fire. You were in the fire crosshairs. It was. Well, anyway, I guess so. Real world meets video screen. But, you were in the metaverse. Yeah, I, I probably was. Um, but no. That's uh, a nice great, restaurant. Yeah, it was a great restaurant. Great experience. Kudos uh, to the Blackwork. Good service. Nice little chocolate mousse dessert at the end. Um, Brussels sprouts and uh, some all gratin potatoes. It was really good. Really Do you good. eat Brussels sprouts? Uh, so uh, it's a funny thing. Uh, <laughs> Lindsay loves Brussels sprouts. Lindsay talks to her Brussels sprouts in the oven. So like when they're, when they're uh, cooking in the oven and, and she checks on them, she's, she talks to them. Um, I, I have grown to appreciate Brussels, Brussels sprouts, sprouts for, what uh, they are. for what they are. Uh, now, um, we roast the Brussels sprouts at home and, and it's okay, it's salt and pepper. But like last night they had some, some uh, bacon and some other, you know, like things going on there, like a little sauce sort of thing. And they were really, really good. Yeah. Fat yeah. up the green stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, they were bacon, probably bacon on everything. a little less bacon, healthy. Bacon just makes everything better. They were, they were really good though. So I, pre- um, I prefer bacon wrapped tofu. <laughs> 
There have been times where I've described Brussels sprouts as smelling like wet socks, but I've come around to the idea that they are um, decent. They're okay. They're not my favorite vegetable, but I will eat them. And if they're like they are last night with bacon and whatever other stuff they put in it, it was really good. Well, they're a lot better than the McDonald's and McFlurry and chocolate chip cookies you had for lunch today. Oh, gosh. That, that, is not, that did not happen. Did not have it. <laughs> no, no, no. You can't get me on that one. <laughs> anyway, hey, Amelia, Grandpa's, Grandpa's watching and he says, go Eagles. So he likes that we're talking about football too. Mm -hmm. Yep. So there you go. Is it, is it Grandpa? Is that what you're saying? Grampy. 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 Okay. Yep. 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 Every family's got that little unique uh, thing. Papa, yep. Gramps, Grampy. Meemaw. Meemaw. Peepaw. <laughs> Paul sounds funny. You that would be one I'd never be able to get over yeah, as a right. child. Just right. totally juvenile. Anyway, as we come to the end of our show, we have to figure this all out here. This new, well, that was a great interview. Normally, I mean, mm -hmm. Jennifer definitely has won. She's in the lead for guest of the year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, so far. Uh, all uh, the requisites were done. Yep. 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 Uh, great little space. Sounded right. I mean, as far as audio quality yep. goes. Her internet connection was solid. Great charity. On it. Just on it. So that went a little longer. And we decided to push the banter to the back. Yep, yep. So if you like this and you like the new feel and look for the show and you want to be a guest, you go to LancasterConnects.com slash guest. Uh, you get in for prizes by commenting. Right now, somebody in the so, McClure family is going to win. It's a, it's a tight race. I, I mean, are see, they allowed to win? See if Grampy takes the prize from Amalia. <laughs> no, that's my prize. <laughs> or if he gives it, we'll he see. would he would he would he would pass it along. I know. Yeah. That's the feeling. Oh, I oh we got it. We got a late entry. Oh, uh, Kyle friend, Slaymaker coming in Kyle. to uh, there he is to take it. So that's that. Um, <laughs> Do you have a sleep better tip? I do. I was a bad boy last night. I woke up. I have shared. I'm going through some health things. I've got uh, knee replacement surgery scheduled in one month from today. And it can't come. It soon cannot enough. come soon enough. Uh, but it's coming. And yeah. um, tomorrow I get to use three weeks in six days. But uh, these things, you know, I'll hold this up right here. These things in the middle of the night are really bad for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you wake up, don't turn to the phone like I did last night because you just get you just get yeah. sucked in deeper and deeper, and it really yep. messes with your brain because your brain thinks it's daytime because the blue light is like UV light. I like how Amelia's coming for the prize. Yep, yeah, I like that. So yeah, anything you can do to uh, limit cell phone use in bed, around bed, is good. In fact, we made a decision. One of our vendors wanted to make their customers, our customers, use their bed with a phone app. And it's just totally counterproductive to a yeah. quality sleep experience. Yep. So we we just re-merchandise that lineup to include the manual remotes so you don't have to use the phone. Yep. And we think that's the right thing to do. So cell phones, no go in bed. Yep. That's and I'm a big violator of that. Yeah, it's the it's the brain distraction Such and also the is. light. Yeah, well, that's, 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 yeah, that's 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 all terrible. Yep. yep. Uh testimonial time. Gardeners and after some more, um, helping people wake up happy every morning. And we have a happy customer here named Tony. Uh, she worked with Drew and she said it uh, on a Google review recently, it was great working with Drew. He was very helpful and made things easy. Uh, I love shopping local where they get to know you. It makes it more personal. Uh, so uh, we do like to create connections, not only with Lancaster and uh, the Lancaster podcast community and nonprofits, charitable organizations. I think the word you're looking for is with Lancaster Connects. With Lancaster Connects, yeah, there you go. possibly. Um, we like making connections with our customers. Uh, we are you're, you, our customers are not just invoice numbers to us as they are to a lot of big chain stores. We don't one night stand you here. We do not one night. <laughs> that's, that's good. I like it. I like it. Um, no, we we really want to create a relationship. We want to be. Uh, your mattress store for life, um, your wake up happy store uh, every morning. Um, and we, we do that. We have a lot of customers that bring in their friends and their coworkers and their family. And, you know, the whole, mat the whole family sleeps on gardeners mattresses. And um, we see them uh, as the, the, 
original mattress wears out, which will happen over time for mattress number two and number three. So being around for 33 years now, right? 33, 33rd year, I guess we're into. Yes. Um, you know, we're seeing people for the third and fourth and fifth mattress from us, which is, which is just awesome. So, yeah. uh, thanks to Tony and thanks to all of the great customers at Gardner's Mattress Alone. That's right. All right. It's time for the big reveal. Let's see who so, wins. Well, no, wait a oh, no, that's right. We have to announce the prizes. My, my apologies. Can't take you anywhere. <laughs> no, oh. just kidding. So commenting gets you in for the prize contest. Prize letters being fired up. So as always, we're going to keep this one in the, in the, in the rotation. Less normal, normal cuddle flask, which you probably have at home. They're fantastic. Yeah. The, so. the thing I like about this is you can put a lot of liquid in there and it still fits in the cup holder of your card. Mm -hmm. A lot of times those don't fit. That holds, this, that holds uh, 66% of a bottle of bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yep. This one probably holds a whole one. But anyway, you can't fit in a cup holder. But you shouldn't have 66 of a bottle of bourbon in a cup mm -hmm. holder in your car anyway. No, should not. But maybe at home on the sofa, if you have cup holders in your sofa, it's all right. Anyway, so those are the prizes. And drum roll, please. The new, new prize is the on-the-go travel pillow and throw package. So this is a great little package. Really comfy pillow. Would fit super simple and easy-peasy in your suitcase. So that's the new package or the new prize. That's a nice little package for like your car. Mm -hmm. like if you're, you're traveling. If you need a little nap in the, any in the time. trunk of the car and you've always got a pillow and a blanket with you. Carry it into work. Da, 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 da. I'm going to take a nap. Like George underneath the desk. Yes, there we go. Everything, he should have had an on, on the go bundle. Everything returns to Seinfeld. So without uh, too much further ado, uh, I think it is baby. time to spin the prize letter and make this a contest now. Oh, this is a lot, of, a lot of pressure on the prize later. Amelia has demanded her prize. Mm -hmm. okay, <laughs> Kyle, <laughs> Kyle comes in and takes it from the little girl. Just like, oh my God. I mean, thank you, Kyle. Congratulations, for, for Kyle. <laughs> yeah. And you can come into the store anytime <laughs> and pick your prize. We'll have them here. Sorry, Amelia. Maybe I can, maybe I can find you a travel pillow and blanket. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, all right. Well, I think that's the show. It I felt good. Little a roll, show. Little great. reconfigure, retweak to the show. And uh, yeah. We'll Thank see you, you to uh, Jennifer West and Girls on the Run. Fantastic. We'll see you all next week here on the same time, same place on Lancaster Connects. Take care. <laughs>